obituary as feck. Uh, we can do the pretend talking newsreader. Paper right. To fling. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. Oh, right. <clears throat> I don't have a, any. There we go. Okay. So, yes, welcome uh, to uh, Literary as Feck. And uh, this is our inaugural episode, I suppose, where we mm -hmm. talk books. And uh, by we, I mean uh, me. Clive Davis and my good friend over there introduce yourself, sir. I am uh, Nicholas O'Shea Khan, but we will use uh, Nick for short, I think. Fair enough, Nick. There we go then. And um, yes, the idea here is that we will gab on about some book for a while. Uh, there we go. I'm not really selling it, but uh, honest, honest to a fault. That's, oh yes. yes, yes, yes. The proof will be in the pudding. Yes. And um, this is, uh, yeah, this is like our third run at this. Uh, <laughs> our, yes. our first attempt didn't even get to the recording phase because I don't think we actually finished the book. Yes, yes. And then the last time we did um, a five and a half hour uh, Peter Jackson unexpurgated uh, that I hopefully will never see the light of the internet. So let's, let's try keeping ourselves shorter today. Right. Yes. Yeah, so a brief. So yeah. So um. So we're tackling. Well, we, actually, we were going to do Dostoevsky's Demons. Yes. But I think we were a bit ambitious in the time frame. I think we were both like, ah, yes. ah, we'll we'll read that in a week. <laughs> yes, but uh, that's yes. not happening. Yeah. Yes. And not not exactly. I mean, I am I am into it. Just to give a brief kind of uh, mm -hmm. um, uh, a precursor, but but it's not it's not the swiftest no, page turner no. in the it, world. It, is it? Yeah, it requires a certain amount of energy, and you've got to bring yourself to that book. Yeah, you it know, not, not, Yes, it's not. Um, I don't know who it was. Maybe Stephen King or somebody like that said about um, the Parker books. He said, mm. you know, or all of those Richard Stark. He said they're like machines that read themselves. But um, yeah, but Dostoevsky is not quite a machine that reads itself. No, no. Um, but we'll get back uh, to that. Yeah, so, so actually, I'm going to have to open the door for the cat here. Okay. The cat is interrupting our podcast. Perfect. Right. So, um, so eventually we did, uh, we did decide on something that was hmm. very, very swift. Read. Yes, and um, I guess what we'll the way we'll do this, Nick, probably uh, is we'll we'll uh, each choose something in turn. Uh, okay. So next next time, I guess will, will be your choice. Sure thing. Um, as for me, I mean, uh, this is the first episode, so I suppose uh, this is the place to just you know not not ground rules exactly, but but you know, um, I'm I find. Uh, reading a rather large commitment of time and yes. a lot of stuff I want to read. So I'm probably, as in today's episode, primarily going to choose stuff I haven't read sure. before, yeah. uh, rather than that old favourites. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Um, so I have to be very careful because uh, that you don't accidentally kind of choose a dud, right? Because uh, yes. The number of times I've been almost sure I'm gonna love something and it just hasn't turned out that way, right? Right, yeah. So, but then you know we can always we can be in contact quickly if we're both struggling with something and just yes. say nope, we'll try something else. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, this week you decided on something that is is the second book by no, maybe not the second book. It's like it might be the third or fourth book, but it's the yes. second book after this this author had quite a famous book right. um, which you you lent to me years ago and I read and enjoyed a lot actually which was the Jack's Return. Uh, Jack's Return Home by uh, yes. Jack, uh, uh, not Jack, Ted Lewis, Ted Lewis yeah. and uh, of course famously became the film, the awesome film uh, Get Carter. Yes, not the one with Sylvester Stallone though. Um, no, and or, then, um, what's the 
there was a Hitman. Hitman, Hitman was the, yes, the version with Bernie Casey, I think. Yes, which was actually pretty good. Yes. Yep. Um, not Better as good than the as, as Get Carter, but but you know, few things are Get yes. Carter is one of those real kind of classics, I think. Uh, yes. So I have to say, I was quite surprised by it how different the book we read is in some ways. I, I felt than than Get Carter. Maybe. Yes. Yeah, that's true. They, they they both kind of occupy a, a, a very hard boiled world of crime. But yeah, with the film, they clearly yeah took. I mean, you know, um, I don't know how much we want to get into spoilers and stuff here. But there's no um, the final image from the movie then, which mm -hmm. in some ways is is the most kind of cartoonish image in a way as well, doesn't it? It feeds into yes. a, a slightly uh, juvenile conspiracy mm -hmm. mindset, but it works within the world of the film. Yes, yeah. But that's absent from the book. Yes, yeah. Um, but anyway, maybe you should maybe you should explain since you chose the book what the book is. And yes, so maybe. yes, so um, uh, we choose uh, another Ted Lewis book uh, called uh, Plender, uh, which is from uh, 1971. Um, apart from uh, Jack's return home, aka Get Carter, uh, Ted Lewis, uh, 1940 to 1982, uh, apparently drank himself to death, from what I understand, yep. uh, like from the Manchester area, and uh, altogether, I think probably wrote less, less than a dozen books, right? Yeah. Maybe even less than ten. Um, there's the the Jack trilogy, yeah. Um, Get, Get Carter being the first one, and then uh, I remember reading about half of the second one. Right, which is a prequel, I think, but I haven't read either of the. the uh, yes, it might be. I think so, but I kind of gave. It wasn't terrible, but it it, it just seemed a bit. Um, it's even more grim than the first book right but in a slightly kind of caricatured way like uh it felt like he'd gone out of his way to make it right. grim right uh, and it got a bit i don't know repetitive and i gave right. up on it um right and apparently the third book is is not very good at all my understanding is that is that basically that the, the books that are considered most highly are the first one, Get Carter, mm. and then this one, Plender, that we've read, and yeah. then a book called GBH, which he wrote yes. quite late, but is apparently supposed to be very, very good. Yes, that's the way I, I read it as well. Uh, I think GBH is from about 1980. Yeah. Um, so I think if I'm going to read any more uh, Ted Lewis, I, that might be the one, I think. I, yeah. And there's a, there's a um, biography as well, right? Um, yes, yeah. I was just um, reading about that too. It's supposed to be quite yeah. good. Get Carter, uh, Ted Lewis, and the beginning of Brit Noir, I think it's called. Right. Uh, yeah. 2017 by Nick Triplo. Um, yes, I'm kind of curious to read this one, as I'm mm -hmm. wondering if it might be one of those instances where the the real story might be more interesting than the fiction to right. a certain degree. Right. Um, yeah, so so uh, Plender, uh, I, I'll do a brief kind of uh, thought rundown as to a certain point anyway, because yeah. certain things I suppose you don't want to spoil. So this is a quite a quick read. It's like uh, 240 pages or something. Uh, reads pretty quickly, doesn't it? Yes, yeah, no, I got it done in a couple of days. It was not a not a slog at all. No, 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 and um, it's uh, it's a two-hander with with um uh two first person narratives which mm -hmm. was something i didn't clock and okay at the I, beginning yeah did you did, okay. I, I i didn't figure I, it out for some reason yeah i think i did but that's because it reminded me of jim thompson's got a couple of books that do this as well one of, i think the criminal is one and then there's a there's a later one where um where there's multiple uh, first person 
and they all kind of converge at the end. Um, but right. yeah, so right. I, yeah, it's something that I'm kind of used to in my in my pulpy noir books. Okay, I'm not sure why it took a few pages for me to figure it out because it, it, they they even like uh, each. Um, chapter has the the, the name <laughs> the of character's the, name yeah. at the top, Splendor, yeah. <laughs> not Splendor, not Splendor. But for some reason, yeah. uh, for I don't know, like the first ten pages or something, it genuinely confused. Well, it didn't confuse me oddly enough. It's just I thought it was the same character doing everything, right? Okay. And only then did it dawn on me. Oh, these are two separate characters. But mm -hmm. I, I wasn't sure if that was just me being dim or if it was actually orchestrated to slowly reveal itself. What what do you think? Do you think? Because to me, it, it really seemed as if there wasn't a clear delineation between each, each character until you got a little way into it. They could Which, both be the same character. Sure, and I think that makes, if you think about the whole track of the book, I, there is an almost an element of doppelgangeriness about these right. two guys and the way they have had this relation before and the way they've come back into each other's lives at this pivotal moment. Yeah, there is, you know. Yeah. It reminded me a bit of what's the one with um, the movie with um, Mick Jagger and. Um, oh, performance. Yeah, there was uh, something a little bit like that about ah, it. Ah, that's me. interesting. I, I never would have put that together, but the time's right as well. Right? Performance would have come out like a, a year before this book or something. Okay. And yeah, and there is that slight, yeah, um, kind of. Um, you get it and get Carter as well, that kind of time in the British underworld where you, you have this kind of crossover between the underworld and and maybe minor celebrity. Or... Yes, yeah. Huh. No, yes. I just think I had something, thought of that. Something about the book just kind of made me think of that, that feeling of, especially because, well, maybe we should say just a little bit, so it's who Plender is and then who, who, who not is, basically. Right, um, yeah, so... Um, well, Plender, who the title is, Plender is, uh, well, he actually, he's, a, I, I mean, just to reinforce the doppelganger thing as well, or is, I, I think another reason I didn't necessarily figure it out for a little while is because it's written in this kind of stripped down, hard boiled way, that yes. neither character is really given uh, a huge amount of kind of, um, they're very, thumbnail sketch characters right yes and the voice like it's not like he doesn't really change hugely no the style of writing between the two first person narrators either right so no. the fact that it is kind of you're right the same hard-boiled stripped down prose that they're both using to describe their right. experiences right yeah yeah n neither one is um uh particularly prolix about what they're <laughs> yeah about. So you don't get much yes. like but that's that's fine. That's not a criticism at all. It's right. That, uh, yeah. So so yeah. Plender seems to be um, uh, well, the whole thing set somewhere up north, right? Mm -hmm. Somewhere near Grimsby. I'm not quite sure where yeah. that is, but it's, right. it's up north. Um, and he seems to be. Is he a? He's a blackmailer of sorts. A blackmailer, yes. a fixer. Yes, and he he seems to work. And this is one thing that's. It comes up at the beginning and then at the very end of the book. He seems to work for some kind of shadowy organized crime organization, but who's also maybe National Front or right wing yes. kind of politics, because there, there's definitely some fixing at the beginning that has to do with kind of, um, you know, dealing with left wing agitator type of right. characters, or there's a there's a sort of a black power militant that that they sort of want done away with near the beginning of the, the book. And so, yeah, there seems to be this, which again, reminded me a bit of living in Japan, actually, the way that that organized crime and the far right have these kind of relationships. And apparently this was true in, in England at the time, right. that the National Front or these kind of far right groups were kind of enmeshed in semi-mafiosi type of right. um, stuff. Well, the the other interesting thing I picked up on, uh, well, like you said, there, yeah, there's a scene very brief uh, where I think the first time we see inside Plender's apartment, and it's mentioned that he has like um, um, uh, kind of uh, early thirties photos of 
Nazi leaders and life in Germany and right, and right, that, yeah, that, yeah, and is never alluded to again, right? It's just yes. kind of a little detail. And and earlier on as well, there's a particularly peculiar uh, beat where it's mentioned um, again ever so briefly that. Um, uh, Plender is in pretty good condition, or you know he's yes, and they say that's because of the judo and thanks to the Palestinian police, right? Which threw me. I couldn't quite yes, understand yes. what that's all about. Yeah, now no, no. like number one, what is this Palestinian police force, and then why is why why would this British because it. I, I, again, this might be something lost to the sands of time that we're, but was there ever a thing like it? Because it sounds almost like the Foreign Legion or something like yes, that. Yeah. Like you yeah. go and do your time in the Palestinian police. <laughs> and then, yeah, who knows? If there might be some links between, you know, if, if you're in the, if you're in a particular pro Palestine frame of mind that also sometimes puts you strange bedfellows with a right you know, right. Nazis, anti yeah, anti anti-semitic kind of things yeah i don't know because there's also a part later on which is very weird and it's just and you don't get it from both characters points of view you just get it from one but this part where um plender makes uh the other you know our other main character not come out and take photographs of him and his buddies just working out in a parking lot it's like <laughs> yeah. i, I, I that I was completely mystified as to what that was all about, why, and then it never comes back to it. And you're like, okay, yeah, this is what makes me want to read this uh, bio because I'm just wondering if, like, if Ted Lewis had backstory for all these characters and he right. <laughs> knows what these characters it's just it's not in the book, right? It's just right. He did that. Um, but apparently, he wrote very fast and he wrote to deadlines and he didn't really revise according to something I was reading today. So he had okay. that kind of, in that way that like von Lick Dostoevsky would often be like that as well. Those writers who just have this mania to get it on the page and then, so who knows? R right, just, right. Yeah. Um, and I mean, you know, if if reports are to believe, sloshed as well. Um, yeah, oh yes. Time, right? yes. So <laughs> well, and that, that's, the book is very much a portrait of alcoholism on the part of one of the two. So, we, so anyway, we have Plender, who is this thug, kind of, this blackmailing yeah. guy, and yeah. then we have... Sorry, I was just going to say, yeah, just to clarify, so he also seems to, again, not, not, not everything is totally spelled out, which I kind of appreciate, actually, but yeah. he seems to run a business in planting um, kind of ads in personal, in magazines yes. and stuff. And, to entrap people, basically. Yeah, basically, uh, to catch a predator, right? And, mm -hmm. and then yeah. befriending them and then um, getting photos of them, kind of pretending to be into the same thing. Yes, and then blackmailing them. Yeah, and there seems to be some vague uh, yeah, allusions here and there to maybe it's maybe some underage stuff maybe or something along those lines possibly or, or then there's a, there's a lot of stuff which i guess we'll talk about a little bit later on but touching on i guess the kind of what would have been the gay underworld yes. of, of britain yeah. at the time as well right yeah um, closeted um uh, homosexuals and, and and also trans characters right uh, yeah so again for a book in 1971 it's, it's interesting that it kind of talks about some of that stuff and then in that strange way where some of the characters seem homophobic but then as the book delves into their backstories more you're like okay <laughs> like is that homophobia in part a kind of a cover for latent feelings of you right. know att same-sex attraction and stuff right um yeah certainly um, plender and Knott's relationship when they're teenagers because the book goes into that quite a bit you know and explains yes. some of what's happening in the in the present day moments of the book it kind of explained away by this very strange sadomasochistic relationship they seem to have been in like a, right. a toxic kind of friendship but that was also more than a friendship in some ways it seemed or at least yes yes yeah. on the part of, of plender wanted it to be more than just yes in one of the flashbacks yes uh, someone lends a hand yes yes exactly yeah and, yeah. Uh, yeah and it's, it's a moment of which you know i'm sure was not british public schoolboy life or you know you know it's not that out of the ordinary but 
it's right. interesting given where the book goes ultimately. There's a, there's a simmering rage in Plender that kind of plays out as the book goes on about the events of his childhood, I guess. Right, right. Um, yes, yeah, so, so, so the other character is uh, Knotts, who is a photographer for catalogues. Um, and this puts him in a position where he's uh, um, often meeting artist models, right? Female models who <laughs> model all these like handbags and shoes or whatever the fuck for these uh, catalog layouts. Right. And uh, he seems to have, um, he seems to have short eyes as well, right? He's... Uh, yeah, there's nobody uh, likable in this book, which is one of those things that I do appreciate. <laughs> it's, right. it's, uh, it's a scummy book. <laughs> it's a grimy yeah. little book with no redeeming characters, except maybe to some degree, um, Not's wife, because Not is married with kids, you know, and um, right. basically, yes, he definitely, if they established right away, he has a wandering eye and an eye for girls who are teenagers, and that he seems yeah. to abuse his position as a as a photographer to kind of, um, yeah, to take yeah. them back to the studio and then have his way with them and then dump them immediately. Yes, and 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 uh, also to take photographs, I guess, of yes. his private collection, right? Yes, yeah. So uh, yeah, so we're following both both characters get up to. To, to their hijinks and then at a certain point um plender uh kind of bumps into knots in a bar and he realizes oh that's my you know old school chum i guess mm -hmm. for want of a, a better phrase and uh and and kind of is curious and kind of follows him back to the studio and uh when he's with this with this young girl who's got drunk and taken back to the studio to have his way with it. And then uh, a tragedy occurs. I mean, we're not going to get, I, I think this is fine as a spoiler, I think, because it happens. Yeah, because it happens in the first, like, 20 pages of the yeah, book. Right? Really I, think it's I think it's fine to talk yeah. about the fact that, yeah. yeah. But I can't remember exactly how she has the accent, how she falls yeah, down the stairs. Kind of, she just kind of falls off a stairwell, off a very steep stairwell, to her mm. death, right? Basically. Yes. Yeah. And um, and and not is not as concerned as to just cover it up, right? Because if you report yeah, it, it'll married. come out. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be the yeah, end. Yeah. yeah. And and his wife is already suspicious that he's having. Yeah. Rightfully suspicious that he's having mm -hmm. affairs. Uh, but Plender is there to witness. Yes. This. And we slowly it's kind of figure out through this series of, of flashbacks that um, so does not have any flashbacks or are they, they're all plenders. Oh, they're all plenders. They're right. all from his point of view. Yeah. And, and it turns out that uh, back in the day, Knotts was kind of, uh, uh, yeah, I suppose, uh, plender seems to be like a, a poor kid, maybe. At yes, a, I, there's no getting away. I think that's one of the key differences between them is this class thing. And right. I think that's the, it's the class piece that explains a lot of Plender's simmering rage, right? Is that he right. was, he was kind of maybe lower middle class um, or kind of upper working class and, and Plender is deaf, sorry, and then not, sorry, is, is definitely more middle classy to upper middle class. Right. And right. uses I mean, this position to kind of make fun of and belittle. And at, at a certain point, I think that the moment where there's a flashback to them all going over to Knott's house and Knott's mother taking him aside and telling him, you've got to stop hanging out with this poor kid because he's just going to drag you down. These right. other boys will see you, you know, in the future, they'll be useful, useful contacts to have. Right, right. You've got to cut this guy loose. He's useless. And it seems like that this is part of this, the source of his, his kind of, um, the hate he obviously feels for, right, right. for Knott now in, in the present day. Well, hate mixed with also a kind of longing to yeah hurt, I guess. Right? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. and and also like it's strange because all this seems to play out in the flashbacks against the backdrop of what seems like like a normal comprehensive school, yeah. but, school but it yeah. has that vibe of of like sometimes you see in movies like uh, the 
scholarship kid who goes to a affluent school, but they're only right. there because of their grades rather than... Yes, yes. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, but it's a... Comp I don't know. It's a little... I, I'm sorry. Alexa, I'm sorry. off. Uh, I have to remember to turn her off before we do these. Uh, okay. Because I, I suspect this, again, this might be something... Um, um, a 1971 thing that is maybe slightly lost to us because we're not quite old enough. Right. I, I think British life and changed in the decade that we both grew up in a different, like there was a switch over from the old uh, grammar and school and, right. you know, um, I think the schools we went to were a little different from the way schools were run yes a decade before but, maybe but the class thing like the, the being from a moneyed family and and or being not from a moneyed family i that piece i think was still there and i still think that you could feel like i certainly felt on the outs when i went to a school for the rich kids in canada mm. in the late 80s early 90s i absolutely felt like kids would make fun of people for having off-brand sneakers and you know like if your jeans weren't you know like yeah there was there was a lot of that snobbery and kind of um exclusion right. and yeah and so yeah i i that piece for me made perfect sense and the way he's kind of he wants to fit in with these kids but he can't right he's not no, no. He's, i think you might be right it certainly it, it didn't read to me as inauthentic it it just it's i suppose it's surprising in a way because of certain stereotypes that you have i suppose Especially when something like this is is set um, provincial and up north as well. I think right. that you tend to lump everything together, and you forget about the subtle nuances that uh, you know are in communities yes, everywhere, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, but again, that's more of a feeling on maybe my part rather than the book. It's just. Uh, it was, it was interesting well, to me to consider. The I wondered, like, because Ted Lewis himself seems to have been from a fairly, I don't think he's from a lot of money. And, you know, he went kind of, he went to art school and stuff. Like, I, it, it felt that part, so that felt authentic. And I felt as though in some ways he identified himself more, in some ways more with Plender maybe than he does with not. Yeah, well, the rage seems to come from a very real, real place. Yeah. <laughs> of because... resentment. Of because it, because it's because it's um i'd never even by the end of the because I, I think as you're reading it you expect at a certain point you know there's going to be the big speech right or there's going to be a right. big breakdown scene where yeah. linda goes you you never you know <laughs> took me yes, yes. or there's going to be like one particular big but there never is yeah. which is actually yes. refreshing yes I thought uh, that during the flashbacks, I thought we're going to get to that one point where Not has de has specifically stolen this girl that he was right. in love with and slept with her or something like that. And yet we never. No, it's, it's never. Vaguely intimated, but it's never spelled out. It's never. It's, we're no. never sure. And there's never a big, big blowout brick where you know, you know, the huge embarrassing moment where you know, he, you know, he's forever scarred or it's. Yeah. it's because because it's not spelt out in a way, it makes me think that, like you said, it comes from a a real place or something. So mm -hmm. he, he's almost so close to it, he doesn't feel the like the need, need to spell it out. Yeah. Yes, yeah, because you should get it. Yeah, exactly. I felt it I did somehow. Me, so or maybe I'm. <laughs> but I've still got a pretty big chip on my shoulder, I suspect. So that right. piece, I don't know if I, would, if I would go as far as Plender does to unmercifully. <laughs> Right. dismantle somebody else's life and tor mentally torture them for the extent because that's what the, the book really is i almost felt this would have made a great giallo like this right. you know the the template for this would have made a great italian you know once the guy accidentally kills this girl and then this other guy witnesses it and then figures out every way to kind of get under his skin and stress him yeah. out and you know there's also a little bit of uh patricia highsmith's strangers on a train kind yeah. of thing in there as well where yeah. one because you get the feeling yeah so so sorry we're, we're getting ahead of ourselves so yeah so basically after witnessing this and not putting the the body in the trunk of his car 
and just as he's about to drive somewhere and get rid of it, um, Plender quite recklessly kind of intervenes by by ramming his, his car. car into his car and like, <laughs> yes. like then pretending, oh my God, my word, it's nuts. I haven't seen him since whatever, blah, blah, blah. And then going so far as well as to, to um, make sure that he doesn't have an opportunity to get away from him to hide the body. Yeah. And um, steals the body himself. Yeah, steals the and car, yeah. Hides it <laughs> on the other guy's behalf. And then I suppose the idea that then that he's indebted to him. Yes. Right. And also, I think knowing knowing the stress in a way of not knowing where the body is is going to be worse than knowing right. where it is. Right. That like it just becomes this bomb that's always the fuse is always lit and he never yes. knows when it's yes. going to go off. Yes. Right. And yes. so he just leverages that over and over again as the book goes on to cause him more and more anguish. Right. So I, I think that's probably a, a, as far as we want to go in terms of right. machination. So yes. yeah, yeah. that's the setup. So basically, yeah. yes, you have he's kind of, um, yeah, he's enthralled to to this other guy. He's like he says at one point, he's a he's a puppet on his chain. Right. Yeah. Um, and I love the fact that that not seems to have really no idea maybe of why Plender is doing this as well. Like he's, you know, he's aware that he he made fun of him as a kid, you know, but like I don't really think he really, under, there's no point where the light ever comes on for him, I feel, where he's like, oh, this is a very specific, it's more like just that Plender is a, is a, scum guy, is a scummy guy. So of course he would yeah. be, you know what I mean? Like there's nothing, he, I don't think he sees anything personal. I think he sees it as Plender's business in some way. Right. Well, Interesting. And they almost develop a codependent relationship as the book goes on. That yeah, they well, had as kids, like, and it kind of comes back in it's this weird way. You mentioned that because I don't actually kind of get it. I because there isn't. I mean, Knotts doesn't seem to have actually done anything particularly terrible to Plender. Like it all seems. <laughs> do, do, don't you feel? It's all, I. Maybe you have a bigger chip on your shoulder than you thought, Dick, but... No, I don't, no I, I'm very aware of exactly how big the chip on my shoulder is. <laughs> um, no, it's kind of that death by a thousand cuts piece. And, I, you know, the, the part that really struck me was, was the, this moment where there's this relationship that they seem to have when they're uh, just, just the two of them, right? Yeah. Where not makes more of an effort to pretend to be or to sort of be Plender's friend and then as soon as there's other people involved then it all becomes about kind of like keeping Plender on the outside and, and kind of mocking him and making fun of him and I think that's that dynamic is maybe what makes Plender more angry than anything else is that he believes right. on some level he has this relationship but then whenever it's not convenient for for not to play that role he just doesn't play the role he, he becomes yeah. an asshole. No, no, but what I mean is, I'm not saying I don't have sympathy at all. It's just, it's an appreciation I have in a way that that it doesn't, like, um, the way it read to me is this stuff seemed pretty, I mean, this is kind yes, of stuff yes. that happens to yes. thousands of kids all, like, it wasn't yes. a particularly egregious or, or horrible thing. But not to maybe- do anything particularly, there's nothing truly traumatic yes he doesn't pants him on the high bar in front of the entire girls you know right. gym class or whatever you know like yeah. that you know which that stuff also was yeah happening even that it was, you know yeah it's um, like the, for some reason i'm struggling for and I'm, I'm gonna choose a bad example but it's the only one that springs to mind is i don't know if you've ever seen the film um national lampoon's class reunion no i have not okay and uh and the 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 thing in that is that the main character who later turns out to turn up and kill everyone was may, was um, tricked into fucking his own sister. This is a National Lampoon's film? <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. And... <laughs> Another one okay. of their National Lampoon classics. They don't have much of a track record <laughs> film-wise. No, but that, that, that seems particularly out of... Yeah, no, I remember their, even seeing, their as a kid, that seemed, catching that off late night TV, I thought, oh, that seems quite dark and not really suitable for a, for a parody. Um, yeah, okay. Anyway, that, that's a proper, you know, I can see someone 
Just yes, so okay. Arguably committing homicide after that. Right. But I wondered if it's more like, if, if not becomes this avatar of just the general middle class, you know what I mean? And if it's almost just like it's a one man, it's, it's a chance for him to get back at, at all of them, but through this one representative. Yeah, that's true, because he does mention like the closer, because obviously he, he inveigles his way into Knox's life and, and the wife. And, and yeah, he's constantly talking about how nice the decor yep. of their house yep. is. And, uh, and obviously he takes a fancy to the wife. Yeah, there, no, obviously there's a certain amount of, there's a, a class war thing going yeah. on, isn't there? But, yeah. but the, it's, a, it's an example, I think, of, again, we were talking about these little weird allusions to backstory stuff that we might not get fully fleshed out it, it I'm, I'm wondering if there's like a you know a non uh deadline determined take your time as much as you like right director's cut version of Plender, <laughs> right. like a thousand page novel where hmm. you know all this stuff is fleshed out all these motivations are made clear yeah, but I like the fact I like the fact that it's uh, it's as muddy as it is. I, it, oh, me it, too, me too. It lends but, the book more. It's just weirder as a result of you not quite understanding exactly the motivations of either yeah. character. And, and I do think not. I could never wonder if, if that was a joke or not. But Peter, not you know, if like this guy had literally tripped over his own dick, um, you know, in like that, it's just because it does seem to be his life that like. You know, it's that element of his life and his rampant increasing alcoholism that seems to have derailed him. And in that way, I thought it was interesting because obviously Ted Lewis, the writer, was already struggling with a pretty serious drinking problem and then wrote a character who basically attempts to numb himself completely. Mm. Like once he's, he's, he's accidentally murdered this girl, he spends the entire rest of the book in an alcoholic haze. I don't think he's ever really sober again from, that, right. from, the, from the murder on. Um, and, you know, he becomes increasingly dissociated from his own body. He even talks of being dissociated from his own body. Like he's, he's stuffed all of his feelings kind of somewhere into his stomach or whatever. And now he's, he's got a, like a wall between those and his brain. Right. He's not going to allow any of that to come back up. And Yeah, he's, he's operating on autopilot, isn't he? And, um, and until it's too late as well to, to take any agency. It's like, oh, yeah, uh, you know, you know. The time to act was a very long time ago. That time ago, yes, there's state. nothing you can do. Which you know, it reminded me of um, uh, Charles Williams's books. Um, you know, the, the, the Hotspot being you know one of my favorites. Right. But his earlier books, um, Hell, like they Hell all have Hell has no fury. Is that what that was? Yes, Hell has no right. fury. Yeah, right. Uh, but then the earlier ones that all have girl in the title, like Hill Girl and River Girl, and all right. of those books seem to have that element of you know, basically they dump the main character like in the deep end at the very beginning and then you just went, spend the rest of the book watching them drown. Like they make right. some bad choice really early on and the rest of the book is them making increasingly worse choices trying to deal with the first choice right. until eventually it all, you know, it all goes as wrong as it can. And I do quite like that as a plot device. Yes. That, uh, you know. Am I correct in remembering, doesn't Hell Hath No Fury have like a really like um kind of exhaustingly gripping scene where so you have to like replace an entire car engine in a storm or something in the middle of the night something it's, like that right yes and it's yes, just yes, yes yeah just to, like carry an engine block by himself and it's like a mud slide and it's yes, and it's like yeah, a, yeah. Piece, a crucial piece of evidence and it's just yes maddeningly <laughs> yes yes yeah and that's a great book too because it completely drops its its lead character in in the shit at the end and that's it and he has no way out he's completely yeah. trapped yeah um, no, it's a it's a film i mean it's a book sorry it's like it's so tight and fast paced and 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 then and the the film is the opposite it's very kind of languorous and takes yeah. its time so it's nowhere near as as punchy as the book but on the other hand only nudity way. topless nudity so it's <laughs> swings and roundabouts right swings and roundabouts. right yeah um so there is a movie apparently of plender made in france yes which 
I haven't seen and was interested to see, I discovered that today and yes. would be interested to see. I could see the French doing this justice. Yeah. Um, Le Serpent, right? Yeah, um, yeah. So that, 2006. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I yeah, no, me, know. I was, if I'd have known in advance, I would might have tried to give it in much the same way, actually, because I realized we've spent a lot of time kind of projecting unfairly onto Ted Lewis. If I'd have known about the bio, then I might have <laughs> tried to read that. Um, well, yeah. we could always come back to him. If we do GBH later on, we could come back more informed about the life and times of That's of not Ted. a bad idea, actually. I was you thinking, know, yeah, we might for a further episode. put that in for a, yeah. a, a future, maybe do GBH mm -hmm. and make sure we read the, because we both seem to be interested in reading it anyway, so. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but what but, I would say, Go, no, ahead, go, go ahead. I'm, no, go on. Well, I, was, I mean, if, if I was to sum up, I would say that I, um, if you like your books grimy and greasy and grim, um, if you like Jim Thompson, if you like Charles Williams, if you like, I mean, the shark infested custard also jumped into my mind. Uh, that okay. Charles Williford book, which is another utterly grim and kind of similar, you know, these these books where somebody murders somebody in a moment of passion or a, by accident, and then the rest of the book is them. And their friends trying to orchestrate things so they don't get caught you know that would be right. another example wilt also came to my mind the tom sharp uh, book okay which i've made never into read a, it's a series as well as the wilt uh, books. it was it was well yes you're right but the first one i think um okay. is the, the the one i'm thinking of because it was also made into a not very good movie with yes. Chris jones um mel, mel smith i thought griffey's jones played Played. Um, I think we'll have to look this up later on. But I think it's Mel Smith, or maybe they're both in it. But I anyway. Um, but in any case, um, in that he, there's a whole comedy of errors where he, he ends up appearing to have murdered a girl, and then spends the rest of the book kind of trying to they both cover up. Did. Okay, there we go. Yeah. Yes. Um, uh, Griff Rhys Jones is Wilt, and Mel right. Smith is Inspector. Uh, yeah, sorry that I, I had to look that up because that was one of those things like um, um, that was like such a big film. I think probably in the UK only. Yes, I would sure. imagine uh, in the US it was an art house release, if anything, right? Uh, yeah, but it was such a big. It was one of those things that was huge and then totally forgotten about now. Like one of those. Do yes, you remember? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I always liked those books, though, mostly because they had these cartoon covers that were, I don't know who the artist was, but he drew these ridiculously crowded scenes with all these little cartoon figures running around doing. So all of those Tom Sharp books had those right. um, same right. kind of covers. And uh, as a kid who yes. liked cartoons. Slightly, slightly bawdy. Yes, yeah, definitely yeah. had a, yeah. a, a postcard, saucy postcard quality right. about them. Right. Um, I feel as if that is probably a quite famous illustrator who might have done because uh, that look seemed right. to have been permanently there in my childhood like there was always <laughs> right uh, right especially film posters like uh, confessions style films yes, or yes, yes, that kind sure. of look, right so that was one thing i thought about was i was thinking about if i was if i was to make if i was to dream cast this movie or sorry this book right plender if i was doing plender the movie yeah who would i cast and obviously in one way for plender you know um a a jack carter era michael Caine springs to mind as that dead-eyed kind of you know um rage monster but for somebody richard e grant was the person that i immediately went to for not and i'm not sure right. why <laughs> yes uh Richard just for the kind of um, thought of immediately for um, uh, Plender mm -hmm. was uh, Barry Foster. Okay, I'm not sure if I know who that is. Barry Foster was the uh, the the murderer in. Do you remember Hitchcock's Frenzy? Okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I can see that. You can yeah. see the face. Sure. Right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he definitely has the the craggy kind of. Yeah, right. Actually, oddly enough, you could cast what's his name from Frenzy as well. The 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 in this, uh, John Finch. <laughs> right. it's, it's a similar yeah. dynamic, right? The Frenzy yeah. story. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. But yeah, no. I would. I mean, I I would 
recommend, I wouldn't recommend to anybody who is disturbed, you know, who, who likes books with likable characters, who right. likes books with happy endings, uh, who likes books that don't leave you feeling like you've got, you know, dirt under your fingernails. Right. Um, well, it's interesting. I, I mean, I think, I think you might have enjoyed this book a bit more than I did. To be honest. Not, not that I didn't enjoy it. I, I just, um, like I said, it was a pretty swift read and it wasn't boring. And I, it was kind of, it had interesting elements for sure. Mm -hmm. And especially, I, I think if I, if I'd have read this, not knowing who Ted Lewis was or hadn't read Get Carter, it might have been less interesting as a standalone. Right. I think, I think, but coming at it with that foreknowledge um, made it a, a, a bit more interesting. Right. I think for me, it was slightly um, underwhelming when it was all done and done. I mean, it has a very swift wrap up. Like, yes, like yes. almost like he'd run out of ink or something. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. It's, it's <laughs> he only had one page left in his sheaf of uh, typing paper. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's it just kind of it just kind of it doesn't exactly run out of steam. That's not the right. It just it literally runs out of road. Like, because we were both yes, reading. We this on, you know how it ends in many ways. No, we were reading, both reading this on Kindle. Right. Um, yes, and I will have to. I, I almost uh, went back to. I almost swiped. Was like to see yeah, what the next like, page was, and there was yeah. nothing. <laughs> yes, really, hundred percent. I thought, oh, is this a defective? I was. I'm glad you had the same. Yes. I doubt we both downloaded a defective <laughs> version. I don't think so. No. Um, and it, no, it, it it fits to end there, really. I suppose, but it's just it's so like, uh, yeah. There's no. It's not that I need a wrap up exactly, or you know what they're doing now, ending, or you know, like <laughs> right. Splendor is now happily married, and you know, but it, it's just it's so, like it's so abrupt, like in about five pages or something, it it goes from here yes. to here, like vroom, yes, like, and it's been a slow burn for the entire thing, and then yeah. suddenly, yeah, it's an odd one, and I couldn't tell if it, it, it's exactly as he intended or if it was time pressures or, and it was just oh fuck it I'll do and that's I've read my my page quarter and <laughs> right because it, it, it's... It, it it works well mm -hmm. enough but it's 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 just um I don't know there's so many interesting potential elements in there and like you said it is kind of quite grubby and and and, and there's no likable cars so I suppose I wanted I wanted a bit more of a, a gut punch or, or something at the end that put it, like you mentioned Jim Thompson, for example, not all Jim Thompson's novels reach the heights, but the ones that do. I know. Uh, Killer Inside Me or yes, yes. Is it 12 Yes. Yes. You're, you're, yeah. You're afraid your house might burn down. Right. <laughs> right. Just from having the book in your house. Yeah. So <laughs> they're so intense. So I think if you've had experience with those kind of books, you're kind of always hoping that these will reach and and when they don't reach that level it's fine you it's not as if i feel like i wasted my time or it's just it's like it's not that top tier of like yes. really like holy fuck what have i just read yes agreed yeah i didn't know it definitely doesn't reach doesn't reach those heights and i think um and i think but it's interesting but it's an interesting choice to make when he's just had such huge success like get carter has been published and then the movie has been made Right. And then he immediately doesn't, I mean, like, like fair dues to him that he doesn't go and write the second not very good Get Carter book at that point. He yeah, that's to do something. 74, I think. Yeah, he yeah. goes off and writes this other thing, which in many ways is going to be, I, I would think, less successful, like less likable, less, you know, like there's, you know, it's not that Get, not that Carter is that nice a guy, but like there's more to identify with in his tough guy right right kind of thing then there is there's no there's just nothing to identify with yeah in well, the book i mean jack's return home i think is a better book than this overall but yes. again even jack's return home actually doesn't strike me as a classic of its type either like i think in conjunction with the film which is a classic yes it's it's like you read it and you're like oh i'm really glad i read that and it's certainly a good crime novel, but it's not a class. So, yeah, I'm, I'm wondering if maybe Ted Lewis never wrote like a, a real class. And it's fine, you know, people don't have to write classics to be worth <laughs> reading, but it'll be certainly worth at one 
it'll be interesting at some point when we get to GBH and yeah to, to see um if if you know if 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 basically Jack's return home was the high water mark or right. So because you know he was still in his early 40s, so he didn't even have time for you know the degeneration to set in no. because with 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 most great writers towards the end of yes. their life if they live long yeah. enough. The last few Jim Thompsons are a tough go for sure. They're not, yeah, they're not up to much. Yeah, um, it's, yeah, it's the old boxer, right? You, you just yeah. at a certain point, you just you don't have it in you anymore. Yeah. And I think again, he was also, I think, pretty, pretty drunk near the end of his life as well. I, I think you know, I mean, it's a sad fact that a lot of great writers do tend to hit the sauce, and then that tends yeah. to um, but affect then, the quality of their work in later years. They seem to be able to manage that knife edge balance when they're younger between being right you know then again you never know there is the late kind of sometimes you get that late stage lashing out final masterpiece as well though right which i'm i'm hoping for maybe gbh might be i i don't know i don't know yeah, yeah i don't yeah. know what his reputation is really but i'm thinking along the lines of um um i don't know if you ever uh, ever saw the sydney lumet film before the devil knows you're dead no like and you know sydney lumet made all these kind of great films when he was younger than you know in the 80s and 90s you've got stuff like q a and yeah, you know it's just okay. kind of, uh, with yeah. its awesome theme tune don't double cross the ones you love that is the theme tune of the film <laughs> that is actually the chorus as well uh -huh. okay um and then uh, but then uh, just before he dies he makes this great uh, crime film uh before the devil knows you're dead uh, which and and uh, a strange analogy but um monty python kind of you know meaning of life yes yeah, yeah. well like, for me like, the wow. great the, the great comeback story is um is john fante's last book i i can't i think it's called dreams from bunker hill maybe the one that he wrote years and years later on the last right. the last of his arturo bandini books right and it's as good as the ones he'd written 50 years before. And he wrote it while blind and basically dying of, you know, diabetes and, you know, he right. was a complete mess. Another and... tearful novelist story. <laughs> uh... Yes, yes. But but it's such a good last book. Like, as I said, it's it's as good, if, if not maybe even better than some of the ones he wrote when he was young. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And he hadn't written really anything because he'd kind of pissed away his talent shooting golf and writing terrible rewrites on crappy 50s Hollywood films, right? He'd spent most of his career right. with a hack and then suddenly came back with this, you know, monumental last book, so. Am I correct in thinking, uh, no, no, actually I just realized I'm not, so I'm not gonna go any further than that. Okay. Um, so anyway, um, yes, we, we've kind of rambled a bit more than I think mm -hmm. we expected, because the idea was to make this a tight little first episode, so. Yep. Yeah, sorry about that. We we do, but uh, we we'll put you out of your misery. We'll finish soon, I think. Um, yeah. So, I I think that's about yeah, that's about it for Plender for me. I mean, it's um, I think if you liked Jack's Return Home, you might want to give it a go. And yes, like we said, if you like, you know, um, bleak, you know, kind of noir <laughs> yes. with no one you like in it. Um, yep. Then this is kind of, but I, but 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 then again, also you know, yeah, yeah. I I don't think it's an essential. No, read. no, I I would agree. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't. I would not put it up there with my best, Jim Thompsons or Williford's or any of those. You know, um, right. those other right. noir kind of writers. Yeah. But it, 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 I am slightly interested as well. The, the only other thing I realized, um, because you mentioned. Thompson Williford and, and 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 you know also going back to people like David Goodis and stuff like that. I, I realized that I have a even though I'm I'm nowhere near well read enough, I, I do at least have a, a handle on the the shape of crime and hard-boiled and noir fiction when it comes to the American writers. But actually I don't have much of a context for Brit. Yeah. And I know there is a history of it. So I'm not quite sure where to place ted lewis in that continuum so right. maybe it's maybe i need to read more stuff from this side of the atlantic how, how about mm -hmm. you do you have a similar 
a bit of a gap in your knowledge there? Or do you, are you more well yeah. in this than I am? No, no, not at all. Yeah, I don't, I mean, other than reading like <laughs> Arthur Conan Doyle, you know, like I don't know, <laughs> I'm not sure like, <laughs> how you get from Sherlock Holmes to Get Carter, like what, what is the bridge there? Right, and then um, you still got to go to Kevin Bacon. It's a <laughs> right. Way, yeah. <laughs> Has he played Sherlock Holmes yet? Um, He'd be a good Watson. <laughs> Kevin Bacon. Yeah. 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 No. He, yeah, for sure. Give him a, a nice handlebar mustache. I can see that. Um, anyway, once again, we're far away from yes, where we should yes. be. So yeah. So let's just stop. Okay. Should we? Seeing as yeah, we yeah, can. Yeah. Uh, we need. Like Maybe we need to give someone else like a a, a button. A hook. <laughs> yes, yeah, just or something, and they just, the and they just turn us off because uh, right. we don't seem to be good at this winding down thing. So, no. so yeah. um, is that is that all for this time, Nick? Yes, absolutely. Okay. All right. Um, until next time, then, when it'll be Nick's choice. Uh, this was uh, literary as feck. Uh, see you next time. See you next time. Bye.